I think there is a huge responsibility because it is part of the cultural program for 2014. It's hugely important that this had to land in the Gobbles. It was for Gobbles people, by Gobbles people, and that it would leave a lasting mark in the area. The Festival 2014 really wanted performances outdoors and it to be more like the name suggests, more festival-like. This is definitely a bit of groundbreaking stuff for us. We've never done anything on this scale outdoors and in the heart of the Gorbals. And I think lots of people will now have a, if they didn't have a point of reference with the Citizens Theatre before, they'll certainly have one, they'll certainly have one now. So the story begins in 2011 when we were invited by the International Community Arts Festival in the Netherlands in Rotterdam. And we were invited to take a piece of work over there with some key members of our community company. Prior to us going, we saw a selection of workshops and performances. And there was this one name that just shone out of the programme and it said, Global Savages. We saw like kind of like shadowy figures by the river in Rotterdam very late at night. We knew they were the Global Savages. We were a little bit shy, we went over and uh, we introduced ourselves. The Bajmajig uh, was started back in 1984 by uh, Shirley Chichu. Um, she started it as a way for young Aboriginal youth to see their own stories reflected on stage in a way that wasn't available at the time. The company is now in our 30th season. The Bajmajig is a word in uh, our language which means the storytellers or the keepers of the stories. Creation process that we've developed over the past uh, 10 15 years now, maybe even, it's called the Four Directions creation process, and it, it puts the, uh, the artist at the center of creation. We were then fortunate enough to be invited out to Manitoulin Island and live and work with Zubaj Majik and see their, their methodology, the way they work, their processes, be much more integrated into the company and the creation center, get a real flavor of who they are and what they do. We shared with them the traditional teachings of the uh, Anishinaabek people, the, what we call the foundation teachings. That's six themes really, it's time, freedom, life, ceremony, the four axes, which is the four things that need to be in place in order to ensure your complete uh, survival. You have to know how to plant, you have to know how to hunt, you have to know how to build, and you have to know how to harvest. So, And then the ultimate goal, the preservation of humanity. We shared them those teachings with them and just to let them know where, where we're coming from and what we're grounded in. So and I think it's transferred through quite well into the process that's here now. Once we'd been out to Manitoulin Island and had a real sense of what the company was about and how they liked to work, it really chimed very strongly in the way we at the citizens like to work, which is very people-based, which is very um, localised. <laughs> Um, the reason for the dawn arrival is partly um, just to greet the, the sun in this new territory that we're in. And it always so helps us find our bearings. The sun always rises off into the east, so it sets us when we're in a new territory up with the four cardinal directions. There's 35 people from the community collective and the cast of On Common Ground who were there waiting and we took it very seriously even though it was you know 4.30 in the morning we walked right across the city with the fantastic sun rising, wonderful atmosphere and took part in this beautiful ceremony concluding in the Rose Garden. It's been a long time coming for sure, it's been, this has been kind of like almost three years in the making now. We're excited, we're, we're anxious, we're, we're nervous, we're we're happy, we're scared, we're, <laughs> we're all of those things. And, and I, but I think we're, we feel safe though, because, because of the relationship that we built. We feel very well taken care of by the sit. So, so although, although we are all of those things, anxious and nervous and happy, but we feel, we feel that it's a safe place for us to, to put our creative energy in, and to make the investment. So we're, we're anxious to start learning and sharing for sure. Well, it was really interesting when we started our regular workshops and trying to encourage people to 
want to participate on Common Ground as a performer. So that was a mixture of people we'd had long standing relationships with, but lots of new people, and to encourage them to take part. My name's Mary, and I live in the Gorbos. I've been here for quite a few years. The Gorbos is a well knitted community. We all pull together when we have to pull together. I run a wee bingo for our pensioners. We do that on a Thursday and a Sunday, and that bingo's been going for about 50 years. Me and my sister took it over about a couple of years ago. It just so happens one night we were in here and Niels came in and he was promoting on Common Grounds. So I was just sitting across from Neil and he, we were talking about it. He was in a rush, he was going back to rehearsals. So I says I quite fancy it. I went along, I was absolutely nervous. I wasn't too sure if it was for me. But once Neil and Ellie started the class, then that was it. Everybody's just made me feel so welcome. Hi, my name is Tanisha. I'm from India. I'm here with my mum and dad. It has been 12 months since I'm here. It has been really scary first time when I came here because I was not I was new to this area. Ellie came to my school. Uh, she said like we are gonna have a like a acting project and it's our uh, name is On Common Ground. Whoever's interested, come uh, please join us. The first day was very good because like, we all had fun, no one knew each other and we just had like new friends and all stuff. Oh, first time meeting the Indians. So I say like, who are you? Uh, so he said like, we are Indians. So I, uh, so I started speaking in Hindi with them because like I thought Indians national language is Hindi. So I was speaking with them in Hindi, but when I was speaking, uh, he was like not understanding that. So I thought like he might speak Punjabi. So I uh, spoke with him in Punjabi, but still he said nothing. So I said like, I thought you are Indian. But he said like, uh, yes, I'm Indian, but I think you're getting confused because we are the feather Indians. So Ellie saw it and she said like, wow, I'm going to take this scene and the act and you're going to say the same dialogues. Shadi, come here. What? Thank you, she said you're Indian. Uh, well, we are the Indians, with the ones with the feathers. Oh, hey, hey. All right, we are the ones at the dock. <laughs> The Anishinaabek people have a long relationship with Scottish people. They came in the spirit of, uh, of trading, not, not in the spirit of, of colonizing or taking over. To... We adopted a lot of their culture right into our culture. We're coming this way now and trading our ideas and sharing our creativity. I think there is a huge responsibility because it is part of the cultural program for 2014. That's not going to come round and not again in my lifetime. Do you know, that's an absolutely fantastic chance to create something on a scale that I've never worked on before. way to start the morning growing wildflowers yeah, really cool and kind of in keeping to where the project started as well with the whole uh, going, going to Manitoulin Island and the whole sustainability thing yes. the regrowth right yeah. very much in keeping with our project on common ground don't you think yeah absolutely and look at the amount of people who've turned up in the local community literally hundreds of people here to celebrate this and they've all been part of this this morning fantastic really brilliant and now on to rehearsal. Yes. <laughs> There's uh, 150 people involved in the project. There's actually kind of an acting cast of about 50, 55 
There's a choir that's about 40 people involved. There's an orchestra that has 25 people involved. And Robert, come on, ranting and raving in three and two and one and go! It is a very, very big piece, it's large scale, everything about it, the set, the performers, the music involved is all of a you know, huge and ambitious nature. And you know, that, that kind of gives you those feelings when you're directing something like that, that it's very, very, very uh, exciting. But it's also, you know, it's nerve wracking, it's scary as well. You see, where we come from, on Turtle Island, our understanding of the cosmos, of the world around us, is based on the existence of powerful beings. Oh, go on, lock your head. I can't sleep at night. See me on my body? The story is about you know, um, a group of young children and teenagers who find an injured bird. And when they find this bird, they are confronted, if you like, in, the, in this moment by meeting the global savages. And in this story, the children kind of have like a secret relationship with the global savages where they begin to learn things through the Indian teachings, whether that's about being more patient, tolerant, kind to um, to nurture nature that kind of stuff and the young people in the storyline hold on to this secret for a while their relationship with the, the global savages and the healing of this little bird It's a very big project. I think this might have been the biggest project we've ever had in the Gorbals. We're going to start working in the Rose Garden on Wednesday, so that'll be fun. So it will take you actually out and rehearse outside, because we've been rehearsing in a room for weeks and weeks, so to actually get outside and rehearse, it's going to be great to feel the atmosphere. And I'd love the older generation of the Gorbals to come here, because they're never going to see it like this again and it'd be nice for them to see something really positive happening in the Gorbals. Hi Janice, I'm Mary. Hi Mary. Hi. Hi. Just came up to see about what's happening with the site. So at the moment we're just making this this fence, so right. that's what the guys here are just... And, yes. and everything is from sustainable sources, so we've got all the posts from the coppicing and all the willow is, is coppiced as well, so it's all very sustainable and everything like that. Oh, everything, and hopefully most things on here are all very environmentally friendly. We've got the kind of audience seating area is from that right. pathway all it's the way around in a circle. circle. Yeah, is it a half yeah, circle? Half circle all right. the way around. And we're quite near the audience. Yeah, it's, it's about sort of three metres away, so one, two. So the audience are kind of about about here. The Don't tell row. me. <laughs> Don't <laughs> tell <laughs> me. <laughs> Get a wee bit nervous already. First performance on Friday. It's actually smaller than I thought it'd be. We're actually nearly going to be able to touch the audience. So I'm getting a wee bit worried about that. <laughs> Thank you.
Today is heading towards the dress rehearsal and we're doing this in the unbel unbelievable conditions. You know, it's kind of the weather what we would have dreamed of in the middle of winter. But actually now we're here and people, particularly the guys, are in some really hot costumes. That's quite a lot to contend with. You know, we've got to really look after people. I think that's a really crucial, th crucial thing today is that people don't get too hot and they just drink a lot of water and they find the shade and they don't sit around sunbathing. Try your hardest under these difficult circumstances. Please, at any point you feel too hot, more water, need to cool down, stay in the shade, do everything you need to do to get yourself through it. Oh, the weather is just like boiling out here. It's just like roasting and we have to like uh, stand here and uh, a few of them are uh, actually like not feeling well, so they actually sent home. Tomorrow is our big day of performance, the 25th of July. So it is, so we're all hyped up. It's so hot, we're all exhausted, but we've all got, we've all got a lot of willpower. So we're going to get this done. I am in the middle. I'm in the middle. I need the middle of the ship to go now. Go. Go there, go down and about. Well, you can see the Now we have to stop the technical rehearsal because we haven't lit the fire. This needs to be somewhere where it's not near, too near the public. We always uh, have a fire as part of our show, but it's always the hardest, the hardest thing to do is to get licensed to have a fire, or and even even at even at home, like in Canada and things like that too. It's it's always an issue. So we have still really? got quite a lot to do today, but see once we start doing it, there's not that much in it. It's more or less all the waiting around and you know, all the technical stuff. We get stopped, we start, we stop, we start. It's just all the hiccups and technical sound and what have you. And that's what's keeping us so long. It's went a bit warm in here. This is definitely a bit of groundbreaking stuff for us. We've never done anything on this scale outdoors and in the heart of the Gorbals. And you know, as I say, that the fact that it's drawing so much attention from local people is really amazing and makes us much more visible in the community. And I think lots of people will now have a, if they didn't have a point of reference with the Citizens Theatre before, they'll certainly have one, they'll certainly have one now. We are Indians. Oh, I'm Indian too. <laughs> the Thunderbirds. 
the great spirits of the sky, the voices of our ancestors, and the underwater monster. Hey! Something up there! Where do you think they're going? Oh no, they're going to cook it! finally healed. We could set him free. I think I'll, I'll look back on this project, remember the sheer scale of it. I'm absolutely in awe of the amount of people who've, you know, been with us along the way, who've committed tirelessly to be part of this. You know, people will view us a little bit differently, perhaps, because I know that we've touched other people within the Gorbals and their lives and their organisations, uh, perhaps a little bit deeper than we have on other projects. So, um, you know, I think we leave that behind and I think people will, uh, you know, will have that sense of understanding from one another and then we'll always think really well about this amazing project that took place. The relationship between the Bajram and Jigging the Sits can, can become bigger. I mean, we've come we've come this far already, so it would be a shame to have it just the end of this project. Okay, we'll see you later. <laughs> I'm back to Canada now. So, you know, I think, I think there's definitely going to be some talks about how we can extend this relationship, and that'll be the legacy, I think. Uh, it just feels amazing. What a journey! <laughs> it's been brilliant, so it has. It's been fantastic. The cast fantastic. Ellie, Neil, everybody's been fantastic. That was excellent. Like people gave us standing auditions and like standing claps and all that. So that was actually really good for me. Exciting. It's been one of the best experiences I've ever had working with the Citizen Theatre and I'm looking forward to working with them again so yeah. Utter, utter joy and deep sadness and kind of weird and what happens tomorrow when, you know, we write reports and we talk about it but we're not working towards it anymore. The spirit of the Gorbals and the people, that's, that's going to live inside me forever and the story, the stories you take, stories are alive, the stories here are alive. When you hear the story, when you're experiencing the story, you take what you need from that story with you and you carry it with you always and it becomes a part of your own story. <laughs> 